Thank you for joining me for Footsteps of Jesus, a discussion about the end times and where and how it relates to the times where Jesus was on the cross. Where we left off is in Jesus, when Jesus died on the cross, it was at Daniel 69 weeks of years, and we are approaching the 70th week. Jesus was cut off not of his own, according to Daniel. And what we know is the return of Jesus is the beginning of the 70th week, which we wait for that 70th week to begin. That would be the last seven years. It's also called tribulation. It, it all focuses on what happens in Israel. And there will be no mention of that, of the church, as you read in Revelation 1, 2, and 3. So the church is not no longer going to be in the storyline of the prophecy in the Bible. Bible is written for a prophetic vision. It is a vision of what's to come, okay, and what has already been fulfilled. Now there's prophecies and Bible stories throughout the Bible that have already been fulfilled. And there are one specific thing that we're going to talk about is the 70th week. Again, that's the tribulation, the seven years, the last seven years. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but if you know about the last seven years, why 69 weeks was on hold is because of the ministry of the Holy Spirit, which has been going on for since the time of Jesus' ascension to heaven. So Jesus ascended to heaven, and he will descend back to rapture the church, to take the church with the Holy Spirit. So right now, the Holy, it's good to know a little bit of background, background on the Holy Spirit. The church it would not exist without the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I send a comforter, and that's what he did when he went, ascended to heaven. So there would have been no church without the Holy Spirit, more or less, in the last 2,000 years. Now, Jesus mentioned this in Matthew 24, to do not be deceived. There will be many fakes out there, many phonies. And you could probably see that there have been a lot of phonies out there, and you could probably see them in, some are more obvious some are not so obvious so if you learn that parable of the fig tree and the this generation will not pass until all these things are complete that symbolizes something very significant there was a generation that had has seen a lot of what would prophecy fulfilled and a lot of people believe that is the Holocaust generation and there's 400,000 left in that generation that has not turned 80 or they have not died so the, this prophecy of that is very significant to this generation the fig tree generation all right, so we've been talking about some things that are important to watch for. Now, what will be it like of that day of the return of the Lord? It'll be like a day, a normal day, and then suddenly Jesus will come with a shout. You already hear the roars and the thunder, and you can hear the war drums in heaven. When you go out and listen to a thunderstorm, it's not like a normal thunderstorm anymore. You can hear the war drums. There's a war in the heavens, and this is where we are right now. Something recently happened about the, right, the signing of Covenant of Many that happened in the Catholic Church. The Pope had signed this covenant, and it's possible this covenant is maybe what Daniel talked about, about the ending, the end and the beginning of the 70th week, the beginning of tribulation. So some of you who don't read and watch or study, this might be news to you. 
but that would be the beginning of tribulation. Meaning, that's the only thing that really holds Jesus back from returning. Meaning, we are at the precipice, at the edge of time. We are at the edge. A lot of people didn't know this, but years ago, we thought there was a lot of reasons why the Jesus would have returned then and this time and this time. But there had to be other things had to be fulfilled. And that's because we're grown in the Lord now. We've learned that certain things have to happen in a certain order. That's because most of us didn't study eschatology like we do now. We know eschatology a lot better, and we're looking at the footsteps of Jesus to Calvary in comparison to what it's going to be like to the days of his return. He, came, he, he left this world as a human being, and he, trans, he was transformed into a spirit into not a flesh flesh man he's he was no longer flesh and when we go to be raptured it is the same experience we're going to have as jesus ascended to heaven the same resurrection power that happened at the grave that resurrected jesus to heaven will be the same power the Holy Spirit power that is, is going to resurrect us from our grave. We who are sinners repent and we are no longer living this sinful life. We know we don't want to be living in sin. You know, if you recognize that you're living in sin, repent and turn from your ways and find ways to reconcile with those that you need to reconcile with. Just turn from your ways. That's one thing that the Lord wants us to do is be repentant, repentative and turn from our wicked ways. Because wickedness is not of the Lord and he will not let you in unless you repent and are baptized in the Holy Spirit. A lot of us still know that we still have a sinful nature. So you have to be repenting and you have to know that this is a part of the, the part of what God wants from us is that we want to be clean and right with the Lord. Well, there's a lot to be said about, about the prophecies. One of, again, we mentioned earlier is that this prophecy of the 70 weeks of years, this is a fulfillment of the tribulation, which is included in that seven years, that seven year time frame, which will all point to what happens to Israel. It is about the Lord and God focusing his attention on Israel. And there's a whole lot more to it that probably we won't get to today. But we've been reading and watching and studying and watching for the return of the Lord. And we were looking at this one specific event and some specific events. And the specific events that we're looking at is one, of course, is this covenant. Once you make a signs a covenant and it's confirmed, that is very much the significant covenant. And also Isaiah 17, 1, behold, Damascus is a ruinous heap. It would be a city no more. And that's in Isaiah 17, 1. And you can see these events already playing out as we speak in the news. So be aware of the day and hour we live in. We are closer to the return of the Lord. We don't know when he's coming. A lot of us can speculate we can say, well, he might be coming in the 23rd or the 24th. And there's some people saying that he could be coming in the 6th or the 7th month, uh, six or I'm sorry, the 6th or 7th day of September. All those days are possibilities. We could be looking at the return of the Lord today. If you're right with Jesus and you know that you are bought and sold with Jesus' blood, 
you know that you are saved from this world. Because there's nothing this world will promise you that Jesus has guaranteed eternity. He is guaranteeing this hope and a future hope for you and your family and your children and your grandchildren. So when you, when you get saved, you save your whole lineage. You save your whole family. You may save thousands of people in your whole lifetime. You might change your whole direction just by asking Jesus into your heart. There's a lot of people that are needing salvation and they want to change life in Jesus Christ. And I'm just saying that a lot of us who are sinners saved by grace, we thank God that we got the message before it was too late for us. So with that, I will end with this, but this Footsteps of Jesus discussion is meant for you to understand where we're at in prophecy. Prophecy is being fulfilled as we speak, and it is coming our way. I mean, there are events right now that give us very much reason to be awake and ready, according to the uh, scriptures about the third and the first, the first watch and the second watch and the third watch that he may come in the third watch. So we don't know when that time would be. It's time to be awake, though, and to not be drunk or high or anything. <laughs> you don't want to be caught unaware because he is going to come suddenly. Like Jesus said, he, he says, I come like a thief in the night. So there's a lot of things that... People will be caught off guard and they will not know that Jesus came, okay? So, it's good to know that the return of the Lord is imminent. Beware, be watching, and thank you for listening to our discussion, The Footsteps of Jesus.